been on a tour where the, where the, where the docent or the bag has actually had a lot of work in them. Yeah, why is that? Why? Because we have a real safety concern when it comes to, if we break a bottle in here, you guys are not making it back home for a couple hours. Because we call the hazmat team, um, and that's just, we have to be really careful about that. Um, but, you know, if you notice, you're really close to the side. Uh, and all these bottles, some of these bottles have some so anyway, Thomas Edison was a chemist. He truly had a passion for chemistry. As a matter of fact, he got his first chemistry set at the age of eight. What's an eight-year-old doing with a chemistry set? Make, Come on. Make formulas. Blowing stuff up. Blowing stuff, blow stuff up. What's the second thing you're going to do as, as a little boy? Stick bombs. Fire stick fire bombs. Stick bombs. Yeah. And that's what he did. Yeah, there you go. And that's, that's what his mom had experienced on the kitchen table. So what's mom going to do? Outlaw chemistry? You're out, no, she would not. She would not outlaw chemistry. Okay? But she did send him down into the basement. And that was his, that was his chemistry lab. Got so bad that dad would actually um, eventually find him part-time jobs to get him out of the basement. What does he do with the, the money he earns with the... Uh, for the part-time jobs? Buy better chemicals. Buys more chemicals. Mm -hmm. okay. To the age of 84, this guy is still having tinkered in chemistry. This is his last great experiment right here. He takes his two best friends, Harvey Fires and Henry Ford. They're desperate to find a reliable domestic source of rubber. Some sort of substitute, whatever it is. Just in Malaysia, they were cutting off the supplies. They were jacking up the prices. You can't run a business that way. So, Tom, they said, Tom, can you help us out? And it took about 13,000 experiments, but he did figure it out. Um, basically, for those of you who've done any part of it, it's a week called Golden Knot. If you have allergies, definitely know it. Um, but when you snap one of those leaves open, you get a little white sap. Maybe you just actually snap a little white sap. Well, a little bit of that. Latex. Same stuff we make party balloons out of, and all those other things that you can make out of latex. So, Edison realizes that that's Gold Rod's best, best shot. What they would do is take the Gold Rod piece, put it in here, and it's the ball mill, so it's got lots of steel ball bearings, they would make a paste. And then all the rest of this is just designed to extract the water and the other impurities. He made enough so that he they could box it up, ship it out to Akron, Ohio. They made a couple of tires out of it. He made a driving one of my stars. He made from tires that were made from um, oil. But that's just one of tens of thousands of experiments. And there's even more that happen in here. It still affects your life today. So that's why we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, Did they start making tires out of it? No, because like about that. three years later, the Germans figured out that you take uh, oil, coal, and a little bit of natural rubber. You can make all the synthetic rubber you need. Yeah. It's just cheaper and easier. You'll see gravel in here. Anybody here a Yankees fan? Okay, that's cool. Usually I have Boston fans. I don't know why. But <laughs> Edison made cement, believe it or not. But it came from a really failed project. See, in the 1890s, he went up into Sussex County up here. You, might, you guys might have been, been to Crystal Springs to play golf or whatnot. Well, um, there, all the mountains just west of here are filled with low-grade iron. So he figured, well, if I take a magnet, I can pull the iron out. I'll just go open up a couple mines. Ten million dollars later, he still figured it out. Remember, this is in a period when a school teacher made three hundred dollars a year, and he blows ten million dollars. Now most of us would walk away from that deal. He doesn't. He takes a look. He's got this great rock crushing technology, great heating technology. Oh wow! He throws he throws limestone in. Now you're making cement. Now the Romans invented cement, but Edison just knocked it up a couple notches. The first Yankee Stadium was built using Edison cement. Okay. Um, that's why you see all kinds of sand samples up there, and lots of different things like that. You guys just came from the phonograph demonstration. You know, Edison's first phonographs were made from tinfoil, recorded on tinfoil. Okay? So, Alexander Graham Bell, in about 1887, figured out that if you take a toilet paper tube and dip it in wax, you can record on that and get around Mr. Edison's patents. What's Edison do? 
He says, I'm not going to be beaten by my, my good friend, Mr. Bell. He comes in here and he goes to work. And he creates basically a, a soak that he can play back, he can record on it and play back about 250 times. Okay? Now, the, the real music recording business is a practical reality. Now, very, all the, those very first recordings, the first sound studio actually, it's on the third floor building fire you guys have to use You guys ever have candy made wrapped in wax paper? Okay, that's an Edison invention, believe it or not. <laughs> Anybody have a tattoo? Don't, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> but the tattoo pen was originally a pen designed to duplicate documents. But the exact, if you have a tattoo, thank Mr. Edison because he designed the electric pen, which turned into the pen. Tattoo artists you still still use today, virtually unchanged. Okay. Well, down here, take a look at what's in my feet. This is a battery. Okay. Where you guys are standing was the first place, first where they designed the first practical rechargeable battery, the alkaline battery. Okay. This thing weighs 75 pounds. But it's still the same basic technology that's hanging around your neck today. This product would sell virtually unchanged from 1915 to 1963, and would still be used in, even into the 70s. It only weighs 75 pounds. Now, here's the amazing part. You guys were up at Glenmont a little earlier today. If you, if you poked your nose into or looked through the window, you saw uh, into the garage, you would see three electric cars. One of those electric cars was advertised to go 200 miles on a single charge using one of these batteries. It actually only got about 100 miles per charge. But what's even more mind-blowing is that using these batteries, Edison had a fleet of delivery trucks that could go 40 miles on a single charge. That's West Orange, the city, make a few drops, and come back. We don't even think about making an electric truck today given, you know, the current situation. Kind of bizarre. I don't want to trip <laughs> Okay. Um, just watch where, you, watch where you're backing up, sir. This is the, actually the latex right here. Um, usually if I have school groups in, I ask them, so what's it look like? And it's amazing what kids will think, think that stuff looks like. In the bowl here is natural rubber. I don't, I've only got three more minutes before I have to start my next tour. In the bowl here is natural rubber. It's not my wife's meatloaf. Um, this is the goldenrod that he would have started out with right here. Okay? That's naturally occurring. Let me show you what, what else you guys This box here. I'll wait for everybody. Edison's idea, his, his, his entire business idea, if you will, is you take one smart person, you surround that person with a couple of sharp operators, and you can move the world or change the world. A really graphic example of that is I showed you the goldenrod just outside the door, right? It's only about this tall. That's the goldenrod that they went into production with. That's 12 feet tall. It took them three years and 12,000 experiments. But the way most, I'm assuming you guys are professionals here, you know, the way you work today was really designed here. I mean, Henry Ford worked for Thomas Edison. And he learned in Detroit how to make light bulbs. And just took that, that mass production process that he learned working while he was with Edison, and he turns it into Ford Motors. He's just making automobiles. So... I've got two minutes. I can answer any questions that you guys may have. Is that a fume hood out there? Yes. That's one of two safety devices in the entire laboratory. If you look, there's some column separators. Just to the left there, there's funky looking tall bottles. Those things, if you don't treat them right, will explode and they'll send chemicals all over the ceiling. And those are the only two type, those are the only two safety devices. These guys worked in here without gloves, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you look on the table here, you can see a perfect round circle right over here. Okay, that's where the acid ate the table. <laughs> Actually, there's a whole bunch of places where acid ate yeah. the table. Okay? It was not uncommon for that kind of stuff to happen. He only blew up two buildings, I don't know. 